Hey everyone, this is going to be a fun one. We are going to look at three examples of vision and also combining it with audio. And if you hang towards the end, we're going to hide three secret messages into a 70,000 token document and then see if GPT can figure out what they are. I'm also uh, working on figuring out the assistance more, but uh, I was, I'm not going to include it in this video. I'm saving it for the next one uh, so that it's actually of good quality. At first, we're going to look at how we can open automatically open a website, get a screenshot of it, and get a description. Second example is going to open two websites and then get snapshots of both and create a sci-fi story based on those images. And the third one actually is going to be narrating a video. Uh, actually, let's start with this one. This is pretty cool. As you know, uh, these, these are part of my larger project, Everything GPT API Crash Course, uh, these, which, are, which is available for patrons. Link is in the description if you're interested. I cover all the basics and all that. Anyway, the uh, link will be in the description. Let's talk about this code. Let's actually run it and see what it does. Uh, let me run this. And I have this quick video of a bit of like a promo of my website, echohive.live. And uh, so we're going to extract keyframes from this. Okay. We have extracted 64 keyframes because we are extracting once every 30 frame. And after that, we're sending all of that plus some text instructions to GPT, and we should get streaming responses, but it takes a moment. Uh, the first one got an error. I'm not sure I didn't have this before, but the API is having some issues. It might be related to it, but we should get some response soon. Okay, here we go. In a world where the digital frontier is expanding at an unprecedented rate, we embark on a journey through the virtual halls of Echo Highway AI Academy. So this is accurate narration. I did ask you to do a dramatic narration. We'll read the system message. Uh, we also call the speech API endpoint and get some narration. Let's just hear it real quick. In a world where the digital frontier is expanding at an unprecedented rate, we embark on a journey through the virtual halls of the Echo Hive AI Academy. Here, bright minds converge to unlock the secrets of artificial intelligence, delving into the depths of code and algorithmic mysteries. Okay, I'm not going to play all of it, but so we not only got this entire video broken down into frames. Uh, we got uh, some text description, narration for it, and we also converted it into an uh, audio file, all using OpenAI and some ingenuity. Ingenuity. Uh, I do want to say that this example I first saw at OpenAI Cookbook, but I wrote my own code, plus uh, I used a different video, but I'll link to this as well. Okay. But like I said, all these code files will be available at Patreon. So now let's take a look at how this works. We do need some requirements here, especially OpenCV Python and IPython, actually, which we are not really using, I don't think. Uh, I believe we can get rid of this. I'm sorry. Yeah, we are not actually using IPython. The OpenAI example was using that. Anyway, we do import CV2 to grab keyframes. Uh, sorry, uh, the frames from the yeah, frames of the video, base64 to convert them into strings. OpenAI, of course, we set our environment variable here. We set our CV2 video capture to point to the path, which is this video right here. And then we are checking uh, if the video is open. Then if not, then we exit because see, uh, we want to make sure the video has been open and it's remaining open, I believe. Sorry, we just want to check if the video is open. And then we initialize a list, empty list. We're going to call this base 64 frames. We have a frame counter because this is a lengthy process. This, this takes a quite a while to extract these frames. And this video, although it's only 30 seconds long, it has like 1800 frames in it uh, so therefore we are only going to grab once every 30 frames which is about a second or half a second depending on um, the frame count uh, that's all we need really uh, so we just go while through as long as we are uh, read the frames while the video is in the loop get the retrieve and the frame if the frame was not retrieved successfully we have reached the end of the video then we break right that's why we are grabbing the retrieve property as well RET, R -E -T. Check if the frame is what we want to capture. We do a modulus for every 30th frame. Then we image encode it in JPEG, right? We get that. The buffer is what we need. Convert the image buffer to base64. We are doing it right here. And then we are converting that into a string. And that's our string, which we're going to send to GPT. We append it to our list, empty list, right here, that frame base64 string. And then we increment the frame counter. So we grab every 30th. After that, after we are done with this loop, then we release the video, we close it, uh, and then we print the number of frames captured as we have done, right? 
in currently there's 64 uh, out of about 1800 because we are capturing one in 30. Then we initialize our prompt messages as a list, which is an object, which is a role user of the content is a list with some text right here. Provided frames are from a video. I would like you to provide a documentary like narration, only the narration, stuff like that. Then we map, we use this. I got this from OpenAI's cookbook. We use a Lambda function and a map to uh, resize the images, right? Uh, I'm not sure how we are doing this, honestly, as these are strings. Not really clear on that, but uh, we are getting the list and we are actually going over the entire list, but we are picking uh, once every other frame. So actually we have extracted 64 frames from the video, but we are going to send 32 of the frames. Uh, and then we define our parameters, which we're going to use to make our call to OpenAI model messages. We are using the GPT for vision preview, max tokens and stream the true. We're going to get streaming responses. Then we call openai.chat.completions.create with those parameters. Make sure to insert star star params, right? Because these are quarks, keyword arguments. We are using the dictionary, which we have defined. Then we get our streaming responses. That's it. We have initialized the name to responses uh, dictionary, so we can append it, right? If this was a function, we can return this and do whatever we will like. So this will give us the GPT visions text response. This is great. But after this, we also want to call to the speech API and get a speech. Before I do want to say, you may run into an error if you don't have FFMPEG installed on your system. I'm on Windows. I have talked in detail how to install it in the previous video. But here is also some uh, chat uh, link. You can also do a, a you know quick search on Google on how to install FFMPEG. Here is the link to download it. Essentially, you go there, download FFMPEG, unzip it, Go to the bin folder, find the path of the bin folder and insert it into your path environment variables in your system. That's, that's what you have to do, okay? Anyway, so we are defining the narration.mp. We are defining a path in which we are very rich. We are going to save the narration. Here we are saving it uh, in the root of our working directory. We called openai.audio.speech.create to the TTS-1 model. This is the lower quality, cheaper model. There's also TTS-1 HD. We are using the voice alloy, but there are other options available. And our input is our responses, right? Which is what we received from GPT for Vision Preview as a narration for all the frames which we have provided to it. And then response.stream to write is going to write it to our speech file path. This is it. Okay. This is wonderful. Uh, this is multimodal, uh, I guess, as, mu as much as they can get text, speech, and image. Let's move on to our next example. This is going to use Selenium. Again, you pay attention to the requirements. We do need Selenium and WebDriver Manager. Uh, here we do all our imports and we do import base64, set our API key. We initialize the options which we have imported from Selenium WebDriver. And we set the option headless to true. Normally when you set uh, headless to true, Selenium is going to control your browser, but it pops open a browser window. Normally when you set it to headless, it shouldn't, but it does anyway. Uh, and then it, it takes a snapshot, right? Let's see, like, let's go to example.com real quick. It's a super simple website. This website do exist. This could have been any website, but I'm just using this. So we're going to open this. We're going to take a snapshot of it. Uh, let's just run this so you can see it in action real quick. I'm not going to pause the video so you can see it because it's going to pop open the browser and it happens so quickly. See, it just, it just did. It opened. It took a snapshot and it quit the browser. So now we should get a description because that's what we are asking for. A description and suggested improvements. Uh, image model do take a moment, even though we are getting streaming responses. It hangs a, it hangs a moment. I'm not sure if this is always going to be the case or just now. Oh, here we go. The snapshot you provided shows a very simple web page with minimalistic design, so it explains it. Okay, we did get into an API error while streaming. That's fine. As a matter of fact, we were getting the suggestions as well. API has been pretty iffy, uh, obviously. It is to be expected. Everything is new and everybody's trying to explore these uh, new exciting features. So we did set the get our options, set the headless to true and initiated our web driver to use Chrome with the set options. Driver.get launches that website. Driver.get screenshot is PNG, grabs a screenshot, then we quit the browser. Then we want to get the screenshot with base64 encoding in UTF-8. Great, now we have base64. Uh, now we are preparing the prompt. Our prompt messages is a list 
of an object which, which has a row content, which is a list of some text. This is a snapshot of a website. This is the instruction, right? And another object of image key and a screenshot base 64, which we have attained right here. And we are initializing the parameters as a dictionary. GPT for vision preview, our prompt message, which we have prepared right here. And we call the OpenAI chat completions create with those parameters, get their streaming responses. And that's what that's what was happening. So this is how that works. Now let's move on to the next one in which we are doing uh, website comparisons. By the way, like I said, this is uh, related to a larger course called Everything GPT API course, which I cover everything in detail. Each one of the files have a separate video explanation. You know, I also covered the older API calls with all the parameters, which are still related, relevant. So, you know, consider it. it's going to be a patron, Patreon. I'm still going to offer the files for this separate uh, Patreon. There's going to be a link in the description for that too. So let's move on to the next file. You can also find out all 200 plus of my projects at my website, echohype.live. Find the descriptions, code download links. I spent over 2,000 hours creating these. I hope you'll enjoy. Okay, so the next one actually uh, opens two websites, gets a sc screenshot of both websites, and then actually creates a sci-fi story. Interestingly, we're going to go to the Wikipedia Pyramid article, and we're going to go to the Artificial Intelligence article. I'm excited to see what kind of story it creates. Let's just run this real quick, see it in action before we review the code. Uh, this is just going to take a moment. I'm not going to pause the video so you can see it opened. Pyramid. We are waiting two seconds for the page to load. Next, Artificial Intelligence. And we close it. And then now uh, we should start getting our uh, story shortly. Okay, here's our story. It says, Conscious pyramids in a world where the line between synthetic and organic has blurred, humanity has embarked on a journey of cosmic archaeology, exploring ancient constructions and artificial intelligence in tandem. Our story begins with the discovery of the artifact, unlike any other. So this is great, right? Like it, it read a snapshot of both <laughs> Wikipedia articles and is just writing a story about it. I mean, I thought this was exciting. I, I hope you think this is pretty cool too, or at least useful. Like I said, we do need Selenium and WebDriver Manager installed. Uh, after which we do have to make our imports. Uh, we set our options as we talked about. We set headless to true, but that just doesn't work. I'm not sure if it's because we're taking snapshots. Uh, normally speaking, if you have headless, then the browser shouldn't pop up, but it's, it still does. We initiate the web driver with Chrome with the options we have specified here. We create a function which is going to take in the URLs. We're going to give it driver.get URL is going to open the browser. We're going to sleep for two seconds, let it load. After that, we're going to get a, a screenshot. I'm not sure if this is necessary, but I did it anyway. Uh, and then we return the base64 encoding of the images. We have specified two of our URLs, and we take the snapshot right using the function and entering the URLs, which we have defined right here. Then we quit the driver. Browser shuts off. The driver shuts off. And now we prepare our prompt messages, which is a list of a single object of role user content is a list of some text. Can you create a sci-fi story based on these two images? We provide the two images as objects with the image key. That's it. Set our API key, set our parameters as a dictionary, GPT for vision preview. We set streaming to true. Then we call openai.chat.completions.create with those parameters with two stars because these are keyword arguments. You could have also entered these here like we normally do. But this is an interesting way of doing it. This way, actually, if you're doing it this way, imagine if you have conditions, you can change these parameters, right? Uh, albeit, you can do it here as well. But uh, this is this definitely separates it, gives you more creativity. Then we initialize a response string, look for each chunk in response, and make sure the delta that content exists because the first message is uh, is an empty string and the last message is none. We want to eliminate those. We print them and then we append it to the responses so that we can do whatever we like with them later if we need to. So this is how it works. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, uh, link will be in the description to the Patreon post for everything GPT API course and also these files separately. Now let's play a little game of a bit of a, uh, you know, embedding secret messages into GPT's context and see how well it can retrieve it. We're going to use a 70,000 token document. Let's see how it goes. Okay, for this, what I've done is I found uh, about five artificial intelligence related papers. I've copied and pasted all of them into this text file. Uh, we can actually count 
we can have the look at the character count. There's about three hundred thousand tokens here, three three hundred thousand characters. I'm approximating it to be around seventy thousand token. It's about three words to four words per token, give or take. So we have this huge uh, document, and then what we do is I just went to the playground chat, set it to GPT eleven point six, and I pasted it. Oh, and but before I did that, I actually embedded secret messages to it. Uh, let me. Right here, I'm searching for first secret word towards the middle somewhere, right here, towards the middle of the document, out of nowhere, in this artificial, in, within these artificial intelligence papers, I inserted first secret word is plum. And then I inserted second secret word is dragon fruit towards the end of the document. And I inserted third secret word is kiwi. And this is towards the beginning. Uh, more towards the middle but beginning but remember we were told that uh, the context comprehension in the middle is the worst but this is still towards the beginning and anyway so these i embedded three secret code messages what, what have you and i and then i pasted it in the playground chat is selected we are using the latest model and now we're going to ask what is the first secret word let's see how it does i'm not changing temperature or anything Uh, I'm just going to wait. It's uh, There's a bit of a delay. I know oh, the first secret word is not provided in the text. Now, let's try it again. This worked the first time around. Let's see. This is the one in the middle. Let's see what it says. Oh, the first secret word mentioned in the document is plum. Let's try it one more time. The first secret word is plum. Okay, let's try it one more time. The first time it didn't answer. Uh, let's see, this is the fourth time, I believe, right? So this is a 70,000. First secret word is plum. Okay, so that's 80% of the time. We can say, I suppose, second. What is the second secret word? I believe that was dragon fruit. I'm, I'm now pausing the video, so uh, we are reading on the API. The second secret word is dragon fruit. Great, let's try again. So the dragon fruit was more towards the end, remember? Let's see what it does. We'll just try it twice and then move on to the third one. The second secret word is dragon fruit. Okay, great. Now let's ask what is the third secret word, which was more towards the middle, remember? The third secret word is not mentioned. Okay, let's ask again. Hmm. The third secret word is not provided. Wonder. Maybe let me put a question mark. So we failed twice. And when I first did it, it found all of the words. Anyway, so we failed three times. Let's try a fourth time. The third secret word is not provided. Okay, one one last time. The third secret word it is provided, right? Is not specified. Yeah. Third secret word is Kiwi. Okay, well, there you have it. Uh, you couldn't find that one. Well, I'm, I'm a little bit bummed out. Let's give it one last chance. Okay, the third secret word is Kiwi. So what, this is like 20%, 15%? But uh, is it good? Perhaps, I mean, this is uh, close to 70,000 tokens, perhaps 80. You know, it's, it's all right, I would say. This is completely unrelated secret words embedded in uh, some document that is completely unrelated, but you know, uh, I'll make more explorations into this. Uh, but that's for another video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, if you uh, are interested in learning about the GPT API, this course would be great. Link will be in the description, and see you in the next video.